Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at ReSharper Live Templates. A live template is a more advanced, more sophisticated code snippet that comes along with ReSharper. You can do the same thing without ReSharper in Visual Studio, but it's not near as sophisticated or as robust or as powerful. The live templates with inside of ReSharper are pretty slick and they're very easy to manage. In, order, in, in reality, to manage them, all you have to do is go ReSharper, Live Templates, your Live Template Explorer pops up, and in fact, you'll notice that predefined, there's quite a few that come along with ReSharper. You know, there's the iteration ones, like a 4-each, and here's the, the template editor, and we'll get to this in a second. You, there's various ones in here. You can also create your own, and they tend to go under the user templates, and I've created some there for C-Sharp. If you had VB and you want to pop those into VB1, C-Sharp ones, you'd want to create uh, some folders for those. So I'm going to imagine or assume that you've actually already used Live Templates if you're a ReSharper user, and you may not have actually known it. For example, if I type in PRO, I get this PROP, and it right next to PROP is a little yellow square. That's the icon that tells me it's a Live Template. If I hit Enter, it'll auto-complete some of the code, and I can type in string, and it'll bounce over, and I can type in my string as a variable name. And wham, I've just completed an entire line of code with very few keystrokes. And it'll generate code that doesn't change over and over again. I've actually created a lot of these for my own usage, such as creating tests um, for doing assertions, doing mockings, things like that. I found that saves me a lot of time, a lot of effort. For example, if I type in TS, I get this right here, T stub. And if I hit enter, it will create a stub of a method for me, and I can type in the method name and that would be my test name and I don't have to worry about typing in my attribute and public void and the curly brackets and the whole nine yards so how do we actually create one of these let's go ahead and do that cut that code out let's come over here come over and you click the new template icon come back to this editor the shortcut name here is what you'll actually type in and the IntelliSense will bring it up for you so you want to try to make this relatively short yet meaningful and we'll paste our code here and I don't want my method to always be my method, so I want it to be a variable name. And if I put in dollar signs around a word, that creates a variable within ReSharper. Now, when I'm done with this, I want my cursor to go right here. I want to go to the meat of the method. To do that, use a keyword within the live template. It's called end. And that will tell the live template manager to pop the cursor to this line right there, or to this point right there. Let's go back over real quick and let's see if this worked. Type in demo test. And sure enough, I can create a method pretty easily and pretty rapidly. Well, that's pretty cool, but there's a whole lot of other usages that you can do with this. For example, one thing I tend to do a lot is I do a lot of mocking. So I want to do something like this. Do mock repository generate mock. And the, the, the details here are not important, such as the repository and the variable name. But when I come over and I actually want to create a template, those become variables. So let's come over here, click New again, and we'll do Demo Mock. And I'll paste this in. And I want this to be variable, so we'll put this within dollar signs. And we'll call this type. And you'll notice that my variable and my type pop in over this list right here. I want variable to be second. So I actually want to type in the type first and then I want it to suggest variable names based on my type. So let's come over, select type and move that up. Because the way this works is this will you'll tab through in the order in which they are. So type will be first, variable will be second, and then if you have more and more they'll just keep going down the list. We don't want a macro for type, but we actually want to use a macro. To use a macro, click choose macro. And what we want to do is we actually want to suggest a name for the variable. And what it will do is it will suggest the name based on the previous thing. So if I save this and come over and do demo mock, it will take me straight to type. So you'll see yellow here, or mock is in yellow and it tells me it's next in the sequence. 
I'll do I episode repository, hit enter, and it'll immediately start suggesting names for me. I can leave it at mock or repository or generate mock or episode repository, or I can even type in my own, foo. And I can hit enter and go on. Now, in this scenario, maybe I want to also go to a new line, so let's go ahead and modify this. It'll bounce to a new line for me, and I don't have to worry about it. You start to see very quickly some of the power and some of the, the flexibility that the live templates give you, and they allow you to create code snippets for anything you want. And one thing I found very useful when trying to figure out how to do some templates or trying to figure out what macros are used, because there's quite a few macros, I'll just go look at another, another existing live template and see what they're doing. In this case, they're not doing anything. They're not using any macros. If I come over to like the four, they're actually using quite a few macros. You know, so like the, the index, it su suggests the name of the index variable. So this will actually suggest the name for us. You know, if I close this and I can take a look at other ones and you start you start to get the idea. Collection will suggest the variable that it should use based on the context of the, that the code is in. For example, if we come back over if I create just a list of foo, if I do four each, it knows that foo is the only thing that's iterable in the entire method. Now if I come back and create another one, and try that again, it asks me do I want to use foo or moo. So those are just various macros that you can use within your templates. And it knows that it can be a var or a string. And if these were, if these uh, lists were typed of say an episode, or a person. It would actually give you names based on the content of the list. So you can see pretty quickly what a live template can do for you. Pretty powerful, pretty cool little thing. It's pretty easy to use once you get up and running. If you're not using them and you find yourself writing the same you know, line of code or segment of code over and over and over again, go ahead and do yourself a favor. Save yourself a few keystrokes and create yourself a live template. Now I can hear you now. I'm going to create a live template, but I want others on the team to use it. Well, how do I do that? Well, you can actually export these. If I come up here, I can click export. I can ask, it'll ask me where do I want to save it, which ones do I want to export. I can choose all of them or some of them or none of them. And I can export this. And the next guy can then import those by clicking the little icon right here. Whoop. Import. And import that file. And now everybody in your team can have the same live templates. So I hope you learned something. Until next time.